Well, it's a Wednesday. That means it's our good friend Ryan Divish of the Seattle Times. It's all brought to you by Chalet Bowl. Chalet Bowl, Washington's oldest operating bowling alley established in 1941, located in Tacoma's Proctor District. Family owned and operated for 40 years. The Frederick family, they love Ryan. They love family. They love bowling. They love food. They specialize in customer service who are bowling food and fun experience at their unique 12-lane facility. Go to ChaletBowl.com, make your next reservation. Uh, we talk to Ryan Davis every Wednesday with the Seattle Times, Puck Sports Studios, built by Limback Lumber. Summer is here. It's hot as hell. That means it's deck and fence season. Let the fine folks at Limback Lumber help you build your new deck and new fence. Visit them at limbacklumber.com. Call them at 206-782-3487. Puck Sports Studios, built by Limback Lumber. Well, you are in your happy place, sir. <laughs> You're home, away from home, the greatest American city that we have, San Diego. The whale's vagina. God, there's no better up, city. Hat? No up, better hat? city. What's up, hat buddy? You got the same hat? Look at that. Got yeah, I got the red, you got hat, the black. The gray. This, yeah. is, this gray the Raiders gray. hat, I get more compliments on. I actually had one, and my buddy Anthony, who lives in Missoula, we were, I don't know if we're going to a Reckless Kelly concert or something in Missoula, and he stole it. And ah. not, not, you know, and then, but it was a little tight. Then he lost it fishing on the river. So then I had to buy him another <laughs> one, buy myself one, um, you know, so, but like, yeah, I love the, these are hats. I went and picked up another one. I, you know, I'm a podcast whore these days. So I don't know if you've seen me on the God, top. You're with, on everywhere. I know. I mean, we've I got, know. we've got conversations that we need to be having. Do we need to get Reggie to pay you more? Well, yeah, to get me exclusive, it's going to take a lot. Um, okay, I'll talk I'm, to Reggie. Am I? Well, like you know, I got to go on the. the I heard you on the other morning show. Yeah. I heard you. I heard all about it. Yeah, because they. Yeah, because they're, they're just don't be mad because they have producers that can put the video out faster than you can. On the, but then, excuse like, me. Uh huh. Then hey, I go on. The, you know what? Listen, first of all, they, these people have armies working behind them. This is a one man band over here. This is this is a mom and pop operation. Okay, yeah. you take it easy on 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 twenty forty media over here. All right, that's like on my uh, my coffee that I just went to go get. And that's why I was late. It's a mom and pop place here in San Diego that's got a yeah. it's got <clears throat> Hawaiian coffee, but. The dad was really overwhelmed, and I think he was yelling at the daughter because she couldn't get the orders out fast <laughs> enough. So, um, no, but like, yeah, being on podcasts, I, I got, I was always wearing the R hats, and so I was like, the other day though, they were, I'm in the press box, they got the Top Step podcast on with Ryan Roland Smith, and I'm not yeah. shitting you, I look like, and I mean, like, I had just gotten off a flight from Tampa. You know, and then dealt with SeaTac traffic and all that other garbage, you know, and trying to get yeah. out of there. And so then I got that. But I'm wearing like this, the, this new R hat that I picked up, the light gray with the blue bill. But I'm a, I, that camera didn't add just 15 pounds. It added 15 years to my face. I, and then my, you know, Lucia, was this, was this the Roland Smith one? Yeah. And then like, and then oh. God forbid, I got to go side by side on that. My mom texted me and she's like, you, you got to tell them not to put you side by side with him. He's too handsome. I'm like, Does Thanks, she ever mom. say that? Does she say that about me? No, I, she hasn't seen this one yet, but my oh, dad, that's my, nice. My mom's like, well, because that goes on Root Sports. My mom's new favorite show is You Cook, I Measure, or You Measure, I Cook, or whatever that's called. Okay, so Jen. is that her apartment, or did they find some random apartment? I, I don't know. It looks like a Because spider. it looks – it. that's what I'm saying. It looks like it's a um, – a, 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 like a, a CIA safe home. Safe yeah, house. it's like a spy's apartment. It's like Jason Bourne's kitchen because there's nothing – Yeah. There. So that so, can't be hers, right? Did they just I, stage I that someplace? I don't know. Maybe I think it might be sponsored by a, a, a company. When it's are like you in the, go it's, on a, that? it's in a Home Depot somewhere in the back of a Home Depot, like the kitchen display. Yeah. But I anyway. want to go on it. Will you talk to Jen? Can you and I go on it? Oh yeah, but she can't have wine. Then she's gonna have to have booze. You know, well, wine's fine. Wine. That's booze. We can drink. I don't wine. like. No, I gotta have hard liquor. Um, but yeah, my mom's like, hey Ryan, I don't. I don't think they should have you side by side with him anymore because he's just a little too handsome. I, I did that with the, Roland I, Smith is pretty good looking. I went on Root Sports a few years ago with him and my mom's just like, oh my God, I love that guy's accent. Is he English? Jesus, and I'm explaining that he's wrong? Australian. And my poor mom. I mean, like, God bless my mom. She's four foot eleven. She's never been anywhere. You know, she's just like 
Your poor dad. Did you start telling your dad to come up with an Australian accent? Oh, yeah, I know. My dad is it's terrifying. My dad kind of looks more and more like Donald Trump every day other than he's got normal <laughs> hair. So it's frightening. <laughs> Yeah, you're everywhere. I don't think there's a show that you're not on nowadays. Uh, well, there are. There's one radio station that I'm not on at any point. There's today. like one. That's the only one. The only one you can't go on is KJR. That's it. That's the only yeah, one. I uh, talked to Johnny Cans. I haven't been on his in a while either. You know? Yeah, we got to get you. Yeah, we'll get you up and up and running. Well, good to see you, San Diego. It's a great city. God, it's oh, a great, man. great looking ballpark. It's overcast park. today. Overcast in 74 right now. How I'll take that. that right now? Oh, my this is, God, this so is not much. your weather right now, is it? No, this is terrible. This isn't anyone's weather. 100 degrees is no one's weather. Anyone that sits there, I got a neighbor, and he, he claims to say, oh, I love this. No, you don't. No, you do not. He He's from here, but his wife's from Atlanta, uh, from Augusta, but then they lived in D.C. forever. Oh, yeah. So he's like, I'm he's sitting outside last night. You know, it's 95 still. It's like, oh, man, this is great. I'm like, well, no, it's not I mean, great. None of this to, is great. Compared to D.C. 95, though, I mean, like, you know, St. Louis 95, that's, that just makes you want to puke. You know, it's like St. Louis 95 is like going into the worst steam room at the Y where there's been three guys that haven't showered. They've gone in there. It just reeks like no P-O. towels or no towels on the old guy. Oh, my God. No Wait, towels. They, they got to have the sack dragging across the floor. You know, you can't have it. Anyway. I love old guy sack drag. Like everybody sits there and talks about women and how gravity isn't kind to them. It's not kind to men. <laughs> no. It's not. I mean, like, I've seen our future. I'm starting to get a little ear hair. Do you have ear hair yet? No, I have un- oh. I, don't, I have nose hair. And I had oh, gray- I have so much nose hair. <laughs> I don't know. And, like, I had a gray eyebrow hair the other day. I was like, what the hell Oof. is this all about? I, mean, I was like, outside. I can't grow a beard. I have, like, four grays right here, but that's it. Yeah. I was outside until 1145 on the back deck just watching TV. It was still, and then I'm watching the news, and they're like, they're doing, oh, what's currently the temperature? It's 86. I'm like, it's 1130. What are we yeah. doing? When I, lived in, when I lived in the hood in South Tacoma, uh, I would take, because um, we actually had like a little, I had like a little, it was a little duplex, and I had a little, you know, a little yard and I had the hose. So I'd take the lawn chair and just put the sprinkler underneath the lawn chair and yeah. sit on the lawn chair. Or else, and then I also bought a kid's pool and filled it up. And I would just l- sit in the pool all day out outside. I was hood rich that way, you know, with that. I just go in the backyard. Pool. I just go in the backyard and turn the hose on. And I just, st- yeah. I put the hose over my head. I mean, just your dogs so probably freaking just hot. hate this. Oh my God. They're miserable. They lay on the floor. They lay on the hardwoods all they the time or, like, or the kitchen floor because they're just like, and you know, they don't want to do anything. Well, you know? your, well, your labs miserable. that you hose them down, like put the hose on them or anything like no, that. No, no. They hate it. That's what I don't understand about them. They love water. If I, I'm going to take them down to the water again today, like we did yesterday and the day before that, and they'll swim and they will swim for hours. Now the younger one tries to drown the older one. That's the that's yeah. the best part of the whole thing because she's trying to get the ball from her. But uh, if you bring the hose out, my God, they scatter. Yeah. Don't don't show them the hose. I'm like yeah, you guys swim to, the whole time. We put the kid pool for our labs too, and they would stand Good. in it sometimes, sit in it. But yeah, it was weird. All right. Well, okay, that so. was that the Julio game that we've all been waiting for. Was it finally here? Is it finally happening for him? Uh, I thought the July 4th game, I think was a better Julio game, better swings. I mean, like four hits last night, but you know, broken bat one, I, I guess like, if you like it that way, like he, he had contact on, on, um, breaking pitches. Like he had a slider mm-hmm. out. I mean, he, he had just hit a slider out. He, <sighs> he pissed on that ball. And, and that's just, the first one, right? And I, I read yeah, that correctly. Slider. Yeah. Kramer had that first slider. Um, and so, yeah, I think that's big. I just liked. You know, if you looked at him last night and like the, you know, he's a lot of smiles and such, but there was an intensity. Like after he sat in the dugout, he was just like, oh, yeah. like he looked like kind of the, he looked like uh, Alvin Mack on the program, you know, or Latimer. He's just sitting there shaking like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm ready to play. I think, and it was funny, we were talking to him and he said he, he did get kind of caught up in what other people were saying, not just the performance, but how he was playing and yeah. he kind of just said, screw it. Like, I'm going to be me. I'm just going to go play. I'm not going to worry about any of this stuff, but just go play. And I think that's been the big thing. Um, obviously the swing stuff I think has been better. Like I did kind of the, the slow mo or I did the screen cap 
or a screen right. capture of Kramer's video. You can just see like his head doesn't move. He's on the same plane, everything like that. Yeah, the picture, great. whoever you are, the guy that did the Associated Press, that picture, if I can. You know, oh, yeah. That's that. perfect. Am I top that's of the perfect. fold? Am I top of the fold? What the hell? Uh, Usually it's got to be the rain or the storm every time on it. I mean, every, yeah, like, the storm really should have been there. They're right there. I mean, the rain, you know, like the rain when they get <laughs> a zero terrible. zero tie. Just stop. Get, I mean, I'm going to get myself gonna get, in trouble. You're going to get yourself in trouble. That is it. But whoever the, let's see, Associated Press, uh, Gregory Bull. Shout that out to a, Gregory Bull. That is a, that is a picture. Look at that. Yeah, That's yeah, how I'm it's supposed to, to look, Divish. Pull that from my uh, phone or pull that from the Look website. at that. Yeah. That's how it's supposed to look. Yeah. Man. I beautiful. mean, like, that's, you know, and we've, they've been waiting for it. And, like, and like those guys are, it's kind of funny. Logan Gilbert said, he goes, you know, we were sitting in the dugout the other day and he hit those two balls on July 4th. And we're like, right. And we're like, Logan is like, here it comes. He says, yeah. the league better be aware because here it comes. And you know how he is. He is like, because there's like, We've had hitters that are streaky. You know, we've seen hitters that are streaky. We all remember streaky hitters. But, like, his streaks are different because it's, like, a month where you don't even get him out. So, I mean, like, that would be big. But, you know, I I did like to, and I kind of mentioned in my stories, like, hey, you know, Cal comes out and ripped his own teammates and said, hey, we're not good enough. You know, this is all on us. And and he even said in the other story I wrote about the track guys with track records not producing. I'm thinking, boy, you just why don't you just say Polanco? But uh, you know, he comes out and he hits two homers and has a double. I mean, yeah. like I'll say this about that guy. It won't always look pretty what he's doing, you know, and there'll be times where he strikes out, you know, six out of eight times. He's never gonna but, hit for average. No, but you know, and I think he will get to I think he can get to a two forty guy, like you know, the dream the Zanino dream of two forty. I think he can be 240, but he, um, you know, he'll he'll do other stuff to make sure uh, you they win. I mean, like you, I wish you well, and you know, people won't get to see it, but it was last night we were waiting for Julio and Logan and Cal have their lockers by each other, and you can't imagine the conversations post game of them just talking shit to each other. It was amazing. It was so funny, like. Cause we're sitting there and, and, um, Cal's like, Logan, are you going to talk to these guys? He's like, I already did a while ago. He goes, they're waiting for you, you know? And then they're arguing about pitch calls and, and Logan's like, I, uh, I was told I couldn't shake before the game. The cow said I couldn't shake once in the game. So I didn't. And, you know, I gave up two homers. And Cal goes, those pitches I called didn't call for those locations. You know, so it was just back and forth, and oh, it was, it's pretty funny. And then Logan revealed that oftentimes they'll shake and Cal will call the same pitch again. But he's just to throw off the hitter. No, because he doesn't want them to throw anything else because he believes he's right. So they'll shake one and he'll just call it again. Like, screw you, no, this is what I want. So apparently he did it to Bryce to the point where he called the pitch, Bryce shook. Cal didn't call another pitch. He just stared at him through the mask until Bryce threw the pitch he wanted. <laughs> God, he's like me. That's how I was in college one time. Ah, it's so I was good. like he Crash is. Davis in college when I call. I'm like, I don't care. Serve it up. <laughs> you know, you know how we we feel about him. We love him. Yeah. Love the guy. Yeah. I mean, I just whatever they can do to get that that guy locked up, man, long term. That, that, I mean, that's exactly the ball player. He's exactly the the stereo type catcher that i want on my team yeah, exactly I mean, like, he's at a central, all of it. he's at a central casting he is a mixture of crash davis you know i'm like yeah uh, jake uh what was the guy's name in jake uh uh, uh oh in major league jake god oh my well, i don't want to say bowers not jake bowers no that's he taylor played, jake taylor jake taylor yeah he's like god, a how, how good looking was uh renee Tom, russo in that oh, oh my god God, I mean, yeah, Tom so Hayden. hot in that. That's a great movie. Just you it's know, a great actually, movie. Roger Dorn's wife was quite. Uh, Dorn's Suzanne, wife was Suzette Dorn. Yeah, Suzanne Dorn. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it was good to see Julio uh, bounce back, and you know, I think it was. I can't remember after which hit it was. Where they, they catch him, the the TV catches him on base. I think he gets a. Uh, do you have a double last night? Yeah, double in the corner. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So when he got on, when he got on there, just the emotion on his face, you know, the, the, the happiness, but the fiery intensity to it. And then you touched on a little bit what he said said last night when he said, 
I want to go out there and just play like a kid again. Yeah. Like I'm like I'm back home. And I think that's a lot of these guys should need that mentality, right? I think they get yeah. so all of them get so overwhelmed with all of the information, right? And sometimes yeah, you gotta play it's just, free. You gotta play free. Yeah. Service kind of said like he goes to he says something like a lot of leagues the league is beat up on Julio for a little bit now. He goes, payback's coming. Yeah, like, well, I mean, it's well, and this is his track record. You know this, this track yeah. record. If you go to just go pull a baseball reference, this is the month. These next two months is when he gets it going. Historically, these are his two best months. July, he cooks. August, he even cooks more. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe it's right now. He's, he's heating up as we speak. Were you surprised? I was surprised hitting him cleanup. I think I look back, it's only his 11th game started there yeah i think it was kind of they they stacked some of the the way they put it with major i think they knew they would knock major around the the okay. starter and they i think it was more about when the um like san diego actually has some decent lefties coming out of the pen so like they kind of stacked it so in a way they could okay every other type of deal um you know at this point just hit him wherever i think he'll probably stay sure. there i mean like they should just bring out the same lineup today i mean i wouldn't change anything i wouldn't change anything it Even worked polanco you know i know that like no not polanco he had two hits yeah he, he was on base three times you know what here's the funny thing is i knew after doing that yesterday i knew he was gonna have a good game i just yeah. knew it i knew it i knew, I knew it well, come on now that's how that's you can predict ball on some of that stuff i mean like come on <laughs> I, I just i don't know I mean, They're like, getting to a point with them. I know it's one game, and and, and and as a fan, I hope he gets it going. I mean, because it would be good for them if he were to start delivering like he has in the past. But I mean, the time is running out on him. Well, yeah, and I think, but I do think, like you know, pick your spots and use them in the right way. You don't have to play him every day anymore. I mean, but um, yeah. I didn't. You know, I know a lot of people thought uh, they would DFA him, and I, I kind of, you know, in my mind, I was like, well, it's gotten to the point because he had struck out in fifty percent of his at bats since he come back, and so Jesus. I'm like, you know, that's a, and they were kind of non competitive strikeouts, so I thought, okay, they could do it, they could, they could DFA him because you know, really, they, it's a seven hundred fifty thousand dollar buyout out of the option for next year, but at the same time, like they're in draft meetings right now, they have been, you know. We don't see Depoto a lot anymore, uh, but we've seen Hollander a lot. But like they're in draft meetings. I did like that Hollander texted us preemptively to tell us that Harry Ford wasn't being traded in the NFL. I thought it was a you know it probably doesn't mean much to fans. That means a lot. That to us. move, but but that's what I was gonna say. Like I don't know how rare or common that is in baseball, but I thought the exact same thing when I read that. You know when you had that tweet and and then in your story was. That's a, you know what? That's a good move on his part. That's a solid move by a guy to just before he gets bombarded with texts from you guys. Yeah. He was pulled because Harry Ford was scratching the game yesterday and he knew immediately people would, would suspect that he got traded, but he was pulled for uh, back spasms. But yeah, well, know, it, was like, a, it was a good move on Hollander's part. It's like, well, the other day when Cole Young got pulled for not hustling, I. <laughs> I'm sitting there texting him and he's trying to watch Caitlin Clark at the storm game with his daughter, you know? And then like, I'm like, freaking, leave me and alone, I'm, man. And I'm sure Kramer was doing the same and Shannon. Shannon. And, yeah. And everybody else. So I was like, yeah, I think it was. Smart. What about Brad and, and Jen? Do you think they're no, doing they it or care. not? They <laughs> Brad's Brad's like watching live golf and you know, whatever, probably watching the Brian Mogg videos and he's so, melting. Yeah. So like, they don't can you imagine any, that guy. Can you imagine the guy where that, where that guy lives? I think he's in Medina. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have AC. How do you not have yeah. AC there? Isn't it required? I don't know. So yeah, I don't know. Like, but so, but Hollander kind of gets it because he's like, yeah. you know, he wasn't like because Depoto was a baseball player, and although sometimes players accuse him of not being one, but like they, um, he kind of gets it. You know, he grew up reading Peter Gammons and stuff like that. He talked about meeting yeah. Peter Gammons was one of the biggest deals of his life. You know, and so. He this is Hollander it. we're talking about? Yeah, Hollander. I mean, like, Hollander, uh, actually, a couple of years ago when he first got – when he was there, he was like one day, he just say, hey, I'm just going to buy lunch for the media at spring training, and uh, we'll just sit around and talk some baseball. So he, he went and he yeah. went to Tacos Calafia, which is a, a great uh, local Mexican restaurant in, uh, in Peoria, and then just brought in a big – big thing of carne asada and carnitas. And we just sat there and talked baseball and like, you know, it was cool. So um, little things, little things yeah, go along I mean, the like, way. 
Yeah, I mean, like it, it doesn't stop me from crushing them sometimes. No, but I, you know, but I mean, those things. I think from standpoint of like, I think they're aware of kind of how the fan base is right now, and the and the angsts and the anxiety about it. Also, like something like that, it's just better to preemptively get it out there before people can speculate. Because not, you know, I mean, there's a lot of tinfoil hat wearing people out there. Now, as much, of course, there is. Now, as much as I wanted to see Logan Gilbert co- a pitch a complete game, because that, that, again, maybe it's our age, that's yeah. still, and it's important to him, too, because he said it to you guys afterwards. That's his goal every time. Yeah. But I, I love a good complete game. I, I think there's just nothing better uh, than a pitcher going the distance, and you just don't see it anymore. So I was hoping he was going to get there. Uh, he didn't. They made the right. They made the right call to get him out, especially after the home run. Yeah. But what was good about it is we <laughs> got to see Santos because oh had he gone a complete game, we wouldn't have seen that. And I don't know if I can love a player more than this guy. I mean, <laughs> my, I mean, right out of the gate, he comes. What was it? A fastball or a slider? It's two sliders at ninety-two. I might add two sliders yeah. at ninety-two. And- Pro far thinks he's throwing at him <laughs> for whatever reason. And they start talking shit to each other right away. Yeah. I mean, he's talking shit to him as he's delivering a pitch, I think. Well, like the I mean, first it's unbelievable. One, first one he throws, you know, and the guy's amped up. And so it runs under. Yeah. And it's not really even that close. But Pro far is kind of a drama queen anyways. He always has yes. been. So he yes. fla- flails back and like Santos is like, what the hell? That's a, you know, he lifts his hands like, what are you doing? That's a slider. So he throws another one in the same spot, whether or not he was doing that on purpose. So then like he does it again. So then, then Santos is really pissed. And my favorite part. So on 2-0, he gets on the mound. Like he, he just holds the ball and he just stands there and stares at him and holds it, holds it. And then unleashes a hundred right down the middle of profile. I was like, oh. well, that was interesting. And so then as he's running to first to cover, he's yelling at, at Profar That's and the, then gets it. And then Profar gave him the little elbow bump. I'm like, if Santos would have turned around, because he's not a small human being. He's huge. I'm like, and then, you know, and so I asked Caleb, I was like, I had never seen anything like that. He's like, I'm telling you that they have, they have, this team has been missing a guy like that for a long time. A long that guy, and I've, I've said it multiple times. I'll just repeat it here. He, it's the combo of Rodney because with Rodney there was a little. There's a screw loose with Rodney. Yeah, you didn't quite know where he was at, right? You're kind of you danced, kind of walked on eggshells with with Rodney. I f- I feel Santos is a little like that, yeah. and then he's got that Arthur Rhodes red ass in him. Oh yeah, and I think it's a combo of those two. And I I am I, I thought. That yesterday's game for me was probably the I don't know for, how for you to cover it, but was the most fun game of the of the season. I had the most fun watching that game. I was gonna say it's probably the most one of With the more enter, entertaining things to watch because like the the principles of what happened and who did it yeah. were, were exciting. I mean, there's just so much. Like I couldn't hardly get all the Santos stuff in there because we we're just you know we were talking <laughs> to everybody else. The and, shoes were great. Yeah, I mean, like, and that's. And that's the thing. And it's the stuff like, did you see the sinker he threw at 101? It had something like 27. The one on the corner? Drop. Yeah. Like, oh. he, Cal even said, he goes, I haven't caught him that much. He said, it was hard to, oh. it's hard to catch him. You know, it and just I don't makes think they your, called that a, I don't think they called that a strike. There was one no. where they missed. He didn't call a strike. I, and I'm like, that just makes your thumb hurt, is what that does. You know, cause like, it just explodes. Oh. So that's the thing now. <laughs> St- starting Man. to kind of, we're starting to piece it together because if Gabe Spire comes starting back, to come together, Pepper. Yeah, I told I told uh, it was funny. We talked to Spire yesterday, and I just said he goes, "Well, you know," he says, "Well, they have me scheduled for this day in Albuquerque with Tacoma, and then I'll throw in Arizona, and you know I could get activated uh, for that series versus Houston, or they can make me do another rehab start." I go, Gabe, do you think they're really going to want us go to against the Houston series without you and Jordan Alvarez? <laughs> He's like, yeah, good point. I guess he goes. I guess I better get ready. Because I'm well, like, if they are, if they're all open and if they're all healthy and ready to go here in this this second half of the season, you're talking about a pretty lethal three guys at the back end of that bullpen, man. Yeah, at the end I, of the game with Munoz, Spire, and Santos. And if they add another piece to that, Jesus, man, yeah, they got something pretty damn special back there. And like, if you use Stanek properly. You know, he's been, and I know he gave up the three-run bomb to Springer, but he's been pretty good. So, like, yeah, you get one more guy, maybe you get a lefty. Maybe you get, you know, that they have that uh, guy from uh, 
the White Sox that was pretty good. Tanner, what's his name? He was pretty good. Like, there's lefties out there, you know, Andrew Kittredge from the Cardinals. There's some guys out there. You get one more swing and miss guy, so you have that guy for that sixth when you get, you know, that's a big yeah. deal. And then the other thing is you get the other guy, so you don't have to run these guys to the ground either. Right. So, right. Yeah. Now, Santos, uh, the plan for him is not – Plan for him is not, they're not going to throw him back to back for a while, right? No. Yeah. So I don't think we'll see him till Thursday against the Angels, maybe Thursday or Friday. That could be interesting, too. You know, I mean, Anthony you, Rendon's I, back. Think about Anthony Rendon versus Gregory Santos. That could be. I want Santos the first when they play Houston. I want Santos to dot one right in that little man's ribs. <laughs> right now, two bays ribs. Oh, just right in his rib cage. To this day, you know, part of the the bickering between the Astros and the and the um, and the Mariners was that Dusty Baker believed that Logan Gilbert hit Altuve on purpose that one time when he just put ninety seven in his ribs. So I asked Logan about it, and Logan goes, "You know how?" I, and like all of a sudden, like he's like happy, and then all of a sudden the Walter face kicks in. He goes, "What do you think?" I was like, "I don't know." He goes. <laughs> And he just goes, well, I don't either. And he just kept walking. I'm like, okay, well. So Spire, you think Spire for that series against Houston, right? I mean, you'd love to that, have that him for it, That's what it seems, seems yeah. like. Yeah, yeah. You'd love to have him for Alvarez. So you'd have Saucedo and him available for Alvarez. Yeah. You know, because, like, I don't know if Tucker will be back by then, but, like, that's – you want to have the you want to have him cause for those two sure. guys. God, you forget they're doing this all without Tucker. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, like crazy, but that's because Bregman's gotten hot and Pena. Yeah, he's go. been great. I'm stunned. I saw the news that Lance McCullers had a setback in his recovery. You know, apparently when you throw nine million breaking balls for your lifetime, and then your arm just doesn't react well from that. Um. All right, as we get closer, we inch closer to the All Star break. So uh, uh, Gilbert goes on Sunday, so he won't be able to pitch, right? Yeah, yeah I don't like think so. Pitch. <clears throat> they could reslot, I guess because of the off day, but I don't think they yeah. will. Um, so I, I, I think he, he's, he was told that he was going to pitch the last day. So uh -huh. I don't think he'll pitch in the all-star game. And that means Munoz could spot could open up for Munoz then. Okay. What, what's the, we, you'll probably find out as we are recording this on Wednesday, you'll get to the ballpark and probably find out the latest on Dom can zone, but it, mm -hmm. yeah, service didn't seem, I don't know. I took it as not very optimistic when he talked to you guys yesterday. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is like when it's that groin adductor area, you worry about sports hernias and all that other stuff. And then <clears throat> when you feel it, when you start to run, like how do you, you know, guys got to play outfield. Like how do you use him? So, I mean, honestly, the, probably the smartest thing to do is IL him and then just use these next four days plus the break plus everything else yeah. and, and see if you can get him healthy. Would you, you like know? to run Robles out there more? You think they will? I mean, I, I would think so. You got two lefties yeah. coming up in the um, Angels series anyways, two lefty starters, Tyler Anderson, Jose Soriano. So I think Robles is going to play some or Demo. So, yeah, I would probably do it that way. What do you, what do, you do with Hanniger right now? It, it, can you, you can't do anything because of the – he's got a player option for next year, right? Yeah, and I mean, like, he, he's still kind of a fixture in the clubhouse in terms of leading yeah. and making sure the work gets done and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I do think, like – I don't think this is the Mitch Hanniger forever. I think, you know, we saw the home run the other day that was on a pretty competitive at bat. It's, the problem is he's just not getting enough consistent at bats to maybe find his timing the way he wants, but he'll keep working. And the thing is, is like, I think that's the one thing that they like about him is like, look, we know he's prepared. He's a professional. And, you know, if you have to do it this way, you have to do it, but you're not, it's not, you're not taking a prospect and sitting him, you know, like with bliss or anything yeah. like that. I do. Honestly, I, I think, you know, Bliss will be on here for a while, but that's something too. Like, I think ideally they'd like to send him back down to Tacoma so he can play more, and we could see what, what, another guy get come up. I'm sure there are certain radio hosts that will have meltdowns about this, but you know, send him back down, let him play. I I, I like Ryan Bliss. I, I've said it before. I think he's going to be a good MLB player. <laughs> I think he'll help a team, but right now he's positionally the, limited, and he doesn't really he doesn't. You know, he has looked overwhelmed at times. So, like, let him go down and play some more. He'll be back. He'll come back. Who's the host that loves Ryan Bliss? I'm not saying it. <laughs> go Navy. I mean, he'll get a – I mean, I, my guess is if you play him more, he's going to get exposed more. Uh, I think so, at least right now. I guess it's, just, yeah. like it's a big jump, you know. 
And I mean, I, I think the same with Lockler. I think we saw a little bit with Lockler at times. I mean, he swings at everything. So that's a problem, you know, like they even told him that is like, it, you know, your swing percentage the number of pitches you're swinging at up here just isn't sustainable because they're going to adjust to that. And we saw it. I mean, like Lockler struck out 37% of the time yeah, yeah. in a brief amount of time. And Melissa was at like 40%. That's, that happens. That happens to a lot of big guys when they first come up. They adjust. That doesn't mean they're going to be bad players. It just means that maybe they're not ready to help right now. If Canzone is out for a bit, I mean, what what do you think that they would do? Would Cade Marlowe be in the conversation? I would think so because Cade Cade's playing well, and like he can. I've help always you. liked him. I've always liked him as a as a yeah, and he like can a help fourth you on the bases. outfielder guy. Yeah, that's exactly what he is, and he can help you on the bases. He's a yeah. pro. I mean, they could do some odd too because you have the two right handers. Or the two lefties, you could bring up Samad. Both of those guys are kind of interchangeable. It's just one's lefty, one's righty. Okay. You know, I, there's other guys, but I think that's kind of what they would do right now. Um, you know, they – hell, Garver got hit – like the day that, like, they put Garver back in, and then he gets hit again. And that's the same day where that Michael Perez, they release him because they – Sebi got optioned back to Tacoma. So, and that Perez right. guy had a, a, a July 1st opt-out. So, I think more than anything, they're probably doing him a favor by releasing him. Cause he's not going to, you know, and so get hook on with another team. So then the day that happens, Garver gets hit in the wrist. So they're, they're playing with fire on that one, honestly. And I told, of Sir course they ago, are. I told Sir ago, I just can't wait to see another pitcher hit one time. He's like, you're yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. they, they got to figure something out, man. Now the fast on that. Uh, what is, um, okay. So we're, we're going to get close to the deadline. It's July 10th. So we're um, almost three weeks away, right? Yeah. Jim Duquette this week said he, he just reiterated probably what a lot of people in baseball are saying that the blue Jays aren't going to, they're going to, they're going to part with Bichette or, or Guerrero. I mean, I don't know that may could just be GM talk to, to try to drive it up. What other they guys? Do you, do they, you, he said they aren't, they are not going to move those guys. Huh. He's adamant that they're not going to move them. Um, they want to keep Bichette and Guerrero. They don't want to do anything with those guys. I never, like, I'll never go adamant on any of that stuff because, you know, True. it's like. They lie. Are, they're, they're professional well, liars. It's like some people are sitting there saying that they'll never trade Russell Wilson. And it happened. It, I mean, I, I, used to say this, I used to say you could never trade. I used to, I've written that the Robinson Cano's contract made him untradeable. You know what? Serendipity happened. His former agent got to be the yeah. GM of the Mets, and then a sure. historic closing when they were allowed to do it. Um, they're not. So I'm gonna, I was looking at the standings. Are they nine and a half back? And the they're wild they're done. They're yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. They're they're toast. I mean, like the one you thing trade is, them in the off season would be the thing. I guess I think so because like you can you can incorporate a third team. Maybe you maximize more. Even because like look at what Soto. Soto got traded on a one year and he got a pretty good return. You throw in a third team so you can maneuver it around a little bit. Yeah. I mean, the Mariners could go out and do that in the off season just as easily. But I think, you know, the one, cause some people think, Oh, you're going to get more at the deadline because teams get desperate, but I don't know how much the two months matter. Mm. I, I think it, they'd be stupid not to listen, but again, like maybe they think too, though, that, you know, we got one more year at this. They're probably going to try and re-sign one of them. You got one more year at this. Maybe you run it back with at least those two and some of your pieces, and then um, get a different manager instead or something. That's like what that. that's what Duquette said. Du- Duquette thinks that they they'll try to re-sign one of them. He thinks it will be Guerrero, and that they'll try to deal Bichette. The Bichette will be the one they'll try to deal. Yeah, well, positionally he has more value even after one year. And the thing is like. Um, they're owned by like you know Sportsnet, it's a corporation. It's it's but they're Canada's team. They're not hurting for money. No. They don't have to. Do, they don't have to deal with their own TV issue because they own the network. They're like you know, yeah. so it's it's they can maneuver it to help themselves. They've just made some bad investments, you know, and and I think they you know I think they put so much into Otani, they just crushed him and they didn't get him, you know. And uh, thanks a lot, I, JP. Yeah, and I wonder too, like what? Um, yeah, God, I wonder what, like you know, they just didn't pitch very well, and for the they cannot they cannot build a bullpen to save their lives. No, they can't. They haven't had a bullpen forever. And so that's you know, I think maybe you just look at it this way: those two pieces are pretty good. You run it back with those guys, and then and try and do it, and then you could 
do a rental or just trade one in the off season, maybe gauge the interest and see where you're going to get with a, uh, an extension. And if you really believe these guys are going to be good, you know, maybe the extension isn't quite as high as you're going to have to pay because they're on a kind of a down. Year. I know you saw this because you, you, you like the athletic. You pr- you probably saw mm-hmm. the note where the Nationals are going to be in sell mode, and they mentioned Winker being the, the prime guy because of the expiring contract. Yeah. Just for an entertainment purposes, could we bring him back? Just I would want to see a collective meltdown from everyone. Yeah, that would be amazing. I Could you imagine the look on Scott Service's face? Like, hey, he sees him walking in the clubhouse. Hey, Skip. Hey, Skip. <laughs> Hey, I um, promise I'll work hard this time. I've uh, been like Danny, one of the 12 teams that <laughs> traded away Danny Valencia, bringing him back. <laughs> oh, uh, I like the lane. Strolling. I like Lane Thomas from the Nationals. Yeah. But I don't think they're, uh, he's, is he part of the trade or not? Like, yeah, he, uh, really yeah, yeah, but there's, there's, yeah. I mean, Duquette, I remember Jim bringing him up uh, uh, weeks ago. Yeah. I mean, Lane Thomas will work in right field. What, let me ask you this. I, I got two players in mind. Now, one is certainly more of a high profile name. The other one, not so much, but, and, and it's not a splash move, but it would be, I think a solid move, but let, let me start first with, I guess, quote the splash move. Uh, if the Cubs find themselves a few more games out, because they're not quite out of it yet, Cody Bellinger. Yeah, I mean, he would help. He helps because he's positionally, he's positional flexible. He can play left, center, right, left, first base, can run. You know, he yep. does hit the ball hard in the air. And, and it's it wouldn't cost you as much in terms of prospect capital because it's what it's three years. Want. Three yeah, years, eighty million. He's got a player option at twenty six, right? Yeah, and he's got an opt out, I believe, as well. So, like, he right. could opt out of it. That's the one. That's the one thing. I think if he has the opt out, then you run the risk of well, he, I don't want to be in Seattle. Okay. But I mean, yeah, he helps. Um, Left handed bat, right yeah. field. You could pop it out there pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like for all the reasons you kind of wanted to sign it, you thought they might try and sign him. I mean, like, you do run the risk too because of some of the numbers he put up in the central. And like you look at the exit velo and some of that stuff, uh-huh. hard hit rate, that doesn't necessarily translate well to T-Mobile Park. It does for the last okay. couple months, but, you know, that's a risk you run. All right. What about late night Lamont? Oh, Lamont, Lamont Wade? Lamont Wade Jr. Oh, yeah. He's like, I mean, I got, so like make, all, he makes nothing. And if the Giants get out of it, he makes nothing. He's like three million bucks. He kills right hand pitching. He's got an 868 OPS. He slugs over 420. Yeah, I mean, like I mean, it's, putting, that's not a splash move, but that's a solid player you pick up. No, at the that's deadline. a really, but that's a smart move. It's not a splash yeah. move. It's a smart move. Like yeah. Lamont Wade puts up numbers in a place where yeah. you don't hit. It's a worse hitting environment than T-Mobile. Exactly. And he gets on base. Like, what is he a three or 420 OPS or 425 uh, OPS or, uh-huh. or on base percentage? I mean, yeah. Yeah, he gets on base. I mean, like. Yeah, he fits everything. I've always thought that that was the, one of their guys. If they couldn't have Luis Arias, like this is a guy that they like. Yeah. Uh, you know, he deals with injuries a lot. But yeah, does he have any I, positional I, flexibility or no? It's I think uh, it's his right? first base, just first, first base. Yeah. He might have played outfield, but probably not well. But I mean, sometimes the Mariners aren't afraid of that either. So I mean, that, and maybe something with the Canzone injury. That course is you look at it like so, so yeah. guys like Lamont Wade Jr., Kerry Carpenter, some of these fringier guys that aren't named. Yeah. They're good players, though. And you're not necessarily like you always major as an impact bat. They have impact, too. You know, whether or not like, of course, I mean, like, that's the thing. You know, Luke Rayleigh's impact on this team. He wasn't a splashy trade. It mm-hmm. wasn't like, you know, he was a great a, trade. He was a platoon player, essentially, for the, the Rays and the Dodgers. But he's he's had an impact, you know, and I think that's yeah, the the Luis Roberts of the world are nice and all, and they would I mean, those are big time potential stars. But if you can't access it, then you but you gotta be smart to what you can access, you know? And I think that's where the Mariners, yeah, Lamont Wade. I like Lamont Wade better. Like I know that the Mariners have been linked to Jazz Chisholm. Jazz Chisholm's a tough fit for a lot of no. reasons. I mean, could you Problem imagine child. Scott Service could you imagine Scott Service face with Jazz Chisholm? You know, problem like, child. No, he's not yeah, a good, not I mean, a good, like, not a good teammate, not a good clubhouse guy. Bad fit. No way. Yeah, I mean, like Don Mattingly and Scott Service are very much the same in how they manage, and Don Mattingly hated Jazz Chisholm. And you know, there are, you talk to guys that were teammates with Jazz Chisholm, they hated Jazz Chisholm. And I do think, from what I've been told from people in Miami, a couple of people there, that Jazz has dialed it back some. 
that, you know, but it's easier to dial it back when the team's terrible and nobody's watching you, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think Schumacher kind of just kind of let him, had some talks with him and kind of let him be who he is and let him figure it out. But, you know, and, and I think these guys are tougher than mentally tougher than people think. So like when you trade away a player, yeah, they're pissed and they don't forget it, but they have to move forward. But when you add a player that nobody likes and you have to see them every single day and you're reminded of all the reasons why you don't like them every single day, that becomes a problem. You know, I mean, that's the, why like Winker couldn't come back. They were never going right. to bring back Winker the next year. It just wasn't. Go back and look. I, I was just looking it up because, you know, we, we get and I will throw myself in that you know, in that boat as well, we get so wrapped up in the big splash, right? It's got to be Luis Robert Jr. It's got to be uh, Vlad Guerrero Jr. It's got to be someone big, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that makes waves. I just reminded him, I was just, as you were talking, that you know, we were talking about Lamont Wade Jr., that it doesn't have to be the big splashy player. It can be smart, calculated moves. Go back to the Braves, to 2021 uh, uh, trade deadline. They got Jock Peterson, Jorge Soler, Eddie Rosario, and Adam Duvall. Yeah. Those weren't headliners. And they had to get those pieces because Acuna blew out that year. You know, yep. don't think that they won't make one of those smart moves again. I mean, because I, I don't honestly don't think that I know he's playing better, but they don't want to play Jerry Kelnick every day in center field. You know, that that's not what they want. They want they want uh Harris out there. They don't want Jared out there. I mean, and you know, they they will add pieces because that's what they do, and they're a smart organization. You know, they're gonna add pieces. They'll add a right-handed bat. They'll add some stuff. Um, but yeah, like those kind of guys. If you believe your 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 team is good, and you have good pieces, then those are the kind of guys you add. And like, and I don't know that the Mariners' offense is good, but like how you fit guys on your roster and what you have to give up and everything else is important. And I think I said it to you last time, though. It, so much of it is just like if you get Julio and JP going. Mm -hmm. That's going to be as big of a difference. And I'm not doing the whole, yeah, well, we feel like we're acquiring somebody because they're coming off the injury list. No, that's – even if you went out and acquired Vlad, if Julio were to stay bad the entire season the rest of the way and JP wasn't going to get better, I don't know that Vlad makes that much of a difference. You know right. what I mean? Like, you have to get these other guys going too. you got to add pieces. But like, of course. you got to get these other guys going. And so, I don't know. It'll be – like, what is it? Three weeks from now, I mean, the, the yep, need could arise. Weeks. Like your your positional need could arise. Like if if Canzone has got like a a sports trainer, if it's a bad groin strain or whatever, then you say, okay, well, we know where we need to add. You know, this piece fits. Now it's the level of the player. Like if you say, okay, we need a left handed hitting right outfielder because Canzone isn't going to be back for a while. Okay, then you can say, well, we can go to Bellinger, or we can go to Lamont Wade or whatever. We get left handed hitter. You know, I mean, I that's just think if you too, could like. Chisholm isn't very good defensively. He didn't have a position. I mean, he plays center, but he's not very good at it. You could put him in left, but he's not great defensively. And for what he, you know, what he offers you offensively, I don't know that it's worth all the other stuff that comes with it. Yeah, I mean, if you did one bigger splash, but uh, or just a smaller move, I mean, you are right. I mean, they need they need to to. Oh, I'm going to use it. I, I almost used augment. <laughs> augment. They need to supplement. They need to, to supplement. Yeah, they they need to uh, they need to add to it, but. I don't know. I've always loved Lamont Wade Jr. Loved him forever. And I just think that, and I think the point that you made that I didn't really thought of, but it's spot on. I mean, look, look what he does in that ballpark. Yeah. And you're right. It's a harder ballpark than, than Seattle. So he's used to, you know, hitting in, in tough environments, but you know, they need to, to sprinkle in a few, a few guys and they don't have to be the big names, but they can be guys that they're just solid players. Like, I mean, I think Lane Thomas is more than just a solid player, but it's not, he's not like, I think if they were to acquire Lane Thomas, I don't think people would be like, Oh my God, it's, it's a big splash. I don't think it would come across as a big splash, but it's a, a smart baseball move. Yeah. Like people that follow baseball would know how good of a move that is. I mean, like, cause yeah. Lane Thomas can do a lot of things. Um, yeah. I, I, I mean, that's the one thing too, is like, when has the Poto ever done what everybody expects in terms of, oh, you got to go get this guy. They never. never do that. Because one, I, sometimes like one guy said to me, one guy within the organization, because he's always trying to prove how smart he is, but I don't, I think it's, they don't have access sometimes to what these other people think that they have access to because of the limitations. One from salary, like if you have that, you know, they don't let you bring on money. Um, it's not going to matter. Or, you know, prospects like, we were talking about it. I was talking about that 2018 when they added 
Cameron Maben and Zach Duke and Adam Warren as their midseason. That's because they didn't have any money. They weren't allowed to spend anything, and they didn't have really any prospect capital to trade with to like offset the money. You know, they didn't they didn't have anybody. Like they traded Tyler O'Neill the year before. He was their best prospect. After that, they were really down. And so it's like, yeah, sometimes it's you can't access the players that everybody thinks you get for varying reasons, whether it's budget limits limitations or prospect limitations. Right. Would, All somebody right. Somebody mentioned, hey, mention this. Would they do yeah. would they do Brian Reynolds? Brian Reynolds, like well, Pirates they, might sell. They vote. Why they, would they sell though? If you're the Pirates, they're, what, what are you so doing there, though? There's reports that they have money issues. Oh, that's right. That's right. That that's right. Because and that's that was the what did I we saw it was all over the internet yesterday, right? Yeah. The owners the owners were saying they were going to spend, but then there's some there's a GM now or front office people saying wait, but we're being told privately we're not going to spend, right? Is that yeah. the story? And they're, yeah, they're not going to spend oh. it. That they have to that they have to actually trim payroll because they just signed Mitch Keller and Reynolds to contract extensions and Cabrian Hayes the contract extensions. That so, poor like, fan all base. All three of those. Any three of those guys are available. And what's crazy is, is like the contract extensions that those guys signed are actually pretty economical by free agent standards. You know, like you look at Brian Reynolds or Cabrian Hayes, it's, they're not exorbitant extensions. So, yeah. I mean, you put Brian Reynolds in the outfield, switch hitter. I mean, they've done that down. They've, been, they've been linked to him forever. Oh, they've, they've, you know, they loved on him forever. I mean, like they, I don't know. Maybe they. What's do his that. so? What's his contract right now? Do you I know what it's it is? Like a hundred million dollar contract mm-hmm. extension or something. I'd have to look. Oh, What's I got it right Spotrack in front of me. Track charging for stuff now. By the way, are they charging some of the stuff? Like you have spoke. Uh, eight premium. years, one hundred and six million dollars, average of thirteen. So he's he's. I mean, he's all the so way to twenty thirty. Haniger, yeah, he's making less than Haniger. Oh yeah. Boy, that'd be a neat fit. That <laughs> would just uh, that would be a real I mean, like neat you're, fit. You're man. talking about Ryan Reynolds batting. You can move him into the two spot. Oof. That's another switch hitter. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, like that's. But I mean, you can know. you imagine? And and, I, and listen, can you imagine the fan base? We we haven't been relevant since Barry Bonds. I was, like, was there. I'd be so know, I'd be so mad. It's, it's funny if they like, traded someone like this. I mean, like, that's the thing, too, you know. And granted, Mariners fans have every right to complain about ownership. They do. But it's not as bad mm. as somebody else's ownership. Like, we've had this We've had this debate. We've had this debate. Yeah. Who would you rather, like, if you could buy a franchise from somebody, would you buy the Angels, the White Sox, the Marlins, or the A's? Now you could probably, the Pirates, yeah, if you could okay, buy the well, Pirates, they got the best, one of the best fields and one of the better fan bases. What are you arguing here, though? I don't want to be in this argument, like, lump us in with all these guys. I mean, yeah. I, well, they, but need, I'm talking, they need to be but, better than that. No, yeah, like the, the Mariners, because they, they actually have capital. They yeah. make, they draw. I mean, like, that's another thing. Like, I saw Ian post it, but they were over 30,000 fans for every one of those games in that homestand. They, so, they've drawn great all year long. Yes, they have all year long. They they're just they they are I mean, will not be when the, the Forbes comes out this off season with what people made last year. This team is going to be at the top. They they have killed it this year, and I don't want to hear anything more about the TV contract. They yeah. are rake. They are going to rake in money this year. That ballpark has been packed almost all year long, even when school was still in session. Ryan Reynolds has got a eight thirty OPS. Yeah, that works. 344, 486 slash line. He has 17 N, homers. N, N, N. Yeah, he has 17 homers this year. And Pittsburgh ain't a great place to hit either. Does Livy Dunn get to come with him, even though she's not with him? I know that. But I mean, like, can we just get yeah. her in the trade too? I mean, if you're covering the Pirates, you got to love Paul Skeen's days. <laughs> oh, I think you do. You want to yeah. see him start the All Star game? I do. Sure. I mean, like, I yeah, come on. She's going to be a bigger star at the All Star game than he is. She's going to go a hundred percent. Everybody, like, she's just going to host a party, like at Texas Live or one of those places. Hey, go see. Lily well, Dunn. they they should treat her like the the, the 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 like the Taylor Swift camera. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. There should be a Livy a Livy Dunn camera. All right, what's on? We got we're hours away from the game. What what do we got planned today? Pacific Beach fish tacos. So what are we my doing? Favorite fish tacos place called the Tin Fish. It was right next to oh, Echo. Yeah. It closed. Sure. It closed. Oh, so close two years ago. So I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, Oscars. I went. I went and had. A, Did you I hear what I just said? Oscars and Pacific Beach. Yeah, but that's, I don't want to have to Uber out there. Well, it's like five miles away. I know. Are you I staying went, downtown? Yeah, I'm staying the gas on it. So yeah. I went out with, I went and had lunch with Eric Williams, formerly of the News Tribune yesterday. Oh, nice house. He, that's right. I forgot he's living down there. He, he's doing good. He thinks he wants to move back to Seattle. What the Stupid. hell are you thinking? Jesus, hit him across the back of the head. Why like, would you move back? It's hard to buy a house down here, he said. I said, I don't know if you've checked out the housing prices in uh, it, Tacoma again. It ain't, any, it ain't any better up here, yeah. bud. So, um, yeah. no, I don't know what I'll do. It's uh, Like I said, it's overcast and kind of cooler out. So there's That's why place, I want to live there. 75 a, degrees every day. Uh, there's a sandwich place called Carnivore. It's old school deli, big old thick sandwiches. I had tacos yesterday and the day before, so and I'll probably okay. have tacos at the field tonight too. So. Have them again. It's it's okay. You can have yeah, them every we'll, day. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. I don't know. I should I, I should probably go work out. I don't even, I don't know what time is the game today. I don't. <laughs> don't you cover the team? I don't know. Why don't are know. you asking? Why are you asking me what, what time, time the game is? Game? It's like six know. o'clock, isn't it? Six forty. Now I don't even I, know what the game is. No, I thought it was a day game today. You are, do you, I swear to God, is it a three, day four, game? I think it says three. I can't read my computer screen. Because I don't my you phone. have no idea what time the game is. It's three forty. There you go. Yeah. You better know what time the game is. I should have known what I time know, the game. I, is. I figured it out. You know, I told yeah. you my Adderall's not working very good these days. Well, it's perfect for you. you get, you're done by six. You're out of the gas lamp at seven o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's I think, perfect. I don't know. Everybody else is leaving, you know? So I'm like, I'm, I'm not that I'm... Why don't you just stay an extra day? Oh, I am. I'm just stay an extra day. Taking yeah. a train up from San Diego to Anaheim. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah I'm trying. Good for you. $44. All right, my friend. That's a great deal. That times are tough at the times, I guess, huh? Well, no, it's because, like, <laughs> you can't get a direct flight from San oh, Diego to John Wayne. It's a lovely train ride. Right yeah. on the coast. And Beautiful. I mean, like a rental car is like eight hundred dollars because if you have to yeah, I don't do that. Yeah, All right, enjoy yourself. Uh, have fun. Make sure you get to the ballpark uh, on time. There he is, Ryan Divish. All brought to you by Chalet Bowl. Uh, they've been uh, established. They've been uh, doing business since nineteen forty one. Family owned and operated uh, by the Frederick family. They specialize in customer service for your bowling, food, and fun experience. Go there and tell them Ryan Divish. Sent you, you'll get the number one lane and probably a pint of beer or a pitcher of beer on them. Go to chaletbowl.com to make your next reservation. All right, we'll talk to you on Friday. Thank you, sir. Yeah, take it easy.